What's up guys? Out here today, I wanted to do a quick update on my bug out vehicle for you guys, so stay tuned. All right guys, so the last video I did on my bug out vehicle, it was a DIY storage uh, system that I had built in the back here. And since then, everything that I've got has evolved a little bit. My gear has changed and my needs have changed. So I ultimately ended up going a different route. So right now I'm gonna take you into the back of my Jeep and show you guys the gear that I keep uh, as of right now. Obviously there's things I need, there's things I don't have. Uh, this is a long-term process. As you guys know, Jeep stands for just empty every pocket. So it's a long-term, very financial, uh, project uh, when it comes to building Jeeps out and especially anything with a bug out vehicle there's always tons of gear that you need to get so with that being said let's go ahead and take a look at the back of my Jeep and I'll show you guys some of the gear that I keep with me Alright guys, so when you're dealing with a big empty crate like this, something that's big and doesn't have any organization to it, the way you want to structure it is by packing by order of importance. And you can use that principle whenever you, you pack your survival bags or anything of that nature. Any, something that doesn't really have any organization to it, you want to pack by order of importance. Because when if, you, if you're using something on a consistent basis, like my boots for example right here. If I used my boots on a very consistent basis, which I do, uh, they're going to be packed more towards the top so that whenever I go to dig them out of my box I don't have to pull out all my gear and you know jumble everything up and then have to put it all back in just to get to something that I use on a regular basis so always put the things that you use most frequently in the most convenient spot uh, so like I said you can pack your survival packs that way at the same time um, basically I keep a variety of gear in here uh, some of which are actual components of my survival pack such as my sleeping bag, my tarp, uh, my um, sleeping pad, uh, pretty much anything to do with the sleep system because it's kind of versatile. It gets interchanged a lot. You know, in the winter time, I'll swap it out for a heavier sleeping bag. Or if I'm just going out on a, on a, a day hike, I might not take a sleep uh, system with me. Uh, so I don't always keep those components on my survival pack. I just keep them nearby. That way I can attach them if need be. Um, so basically what I keep in this bat, this box right here, and like I said guys, this thing is going to evolve. There's tons of gear that I don't have that I know I need. I don't need any recommendations or anything like that. Um, I'm just simply showing you guys what I currently have at this time. There's going to be plenty more to come, uh, and I'm going to be doing some progress updates as uh, this build continues. Uh, but basically, um, I'm just going to go go through here in no real order of importance or anything like that. Uh, I'm just going to go through here and, and show you guys what I carry. Uh, basically, uh, to start off, I keep a topographical map of an area that I particularly train in a lot. Um, and the reason why I keep it, even though I know most of this terrain, the reason why I keep it is to just stay familiar in case I forget something. Uh, maybe there's a water source on here that I don't remember. Uh, or if I, if I just get disoriented and, and can't remember where I'm at or anything like that, a map is a good visual reference to terrain associate and get back to the main hardball. Um, so I always keep a topographical map with me and I highly suggest you guys do the same. Don't rely on technology to do so. You never know when you're going to be out of cell range or you never know when your batteries are going to die. So don't rely on modern technology when it comes to survival skills. You want to uh, get to your roots and practice primitive technology. So uh, a topographical map. I also keep um, two pairs of gloves in here. Uh, no real reason behind keeping two pair of gloves other than redundancy. I've got uh, these are just a really thin like baseball style glove uh, made by Silencer uh, Worth. Uh, they're the Silencer gloves but they're made by Worth. Um, and I, if you guys see anything, you know, if you want to comment on any, any of this gear or anything like that or if you wonder what the name is or wonder where I got it, I'm going to touch on most of that. But um, I'll also be compiling a list in the blog post for this video. So if you want to check that out, it'll also be in the description on the YouTube video and whatnot. Um, I'm, I'm going to make a big list of all the different types of gear items that I have in here and maybe even some extra recommendations and stuff for some of you guys. Uh, so if you are interested in getting any of this gear that I have, you'll be able to do so at a good deal and support the channel at the same time. Uh, these other pair of gloves here are uh, a Rothko brand glove. Uh, again, just a, a thin profile glove, nothing for like winter or anything like that. Good shooting glove. 
Uh, I keep a few days supply worth of, uh, of food and particularly MREs. Uh, and the reason why I do MREs over something like Mountain House or um, Wise Company Foods is because you, you don't have to actually heat these. You can heat these and make them much more enjoyable, but uh, you know the things with, with Mountain House, you don't act, you have to actually heat that food up and, and cook it uh, versus this stuff you don't. So if it came down to it and I didn't have a means of cooking my food, then I would always still be able to use my MREs. Mountain House and Wise Foods are still good stuff. I would highly recommend getting those. Uh, however, make sure you have a, uh, a cooking source such as an alcohol stove or something like that. Um, so I keep a, a bunch of variations of MRE food, a uh, bag of miscellaneous MRE food, tons of different stuff. Uh, probably, honestly, if I could, if I had to stretch it out, this would probably be like uh, maybe a week's worth of food in total uh, for one person. So uh, if I had my, you know, my wife in the car vehicle with me uh, and my daughter, uh, this might only be, you know, two or three days worth of food uh, for a family. So. Um, Definitely want, definitely going to be increasing that as time goes. Uh, packs of crackers, uh, more condiments and things like that, beverage powder, um, just a bunch of different MRE stuff. Um, I keep, I got two different holsters, uh, extra holsters right now. I keep an IWB for my concealed carry, and uh, these are two outside the waistband holsters, one small on the back and one on the hip. Uh, and I use these to swap them out at the range when I train to train different uh, draw positions. Uh, so I got my holsters. I keep a uh, Condor dump pouch. This thing is phenomenal. Um, and the reason why I keep it here and not on my bag is the same principle as my, my sleep components. These are all, I, I build my pack out to be kind of modular. Um, so this only goes with me when I'm planning on doing specific things, maybe an overnighter or a few days in the field when I might need to use some primitive skills to hunt some game. Uh, you know, I might catch a squirrel or something like that and need to carry it back to camp. Uh, this is good for game. Uh, it's also good for foraging and, um, you know, collecting, uh, you know, fire materials and things on the go. Uh, so I highly suggest getting a dump pouch. This is made by Condor. This is a great affordable dump pouch. Uh, so it always stays in here. Uh, keep an extra knife. Uh, this one is a serrated edge uh, SOG seal pup. Um, and the reason why I went with serrated edge on this is because I'm primarily in an urban environment. And uh, I, only, I only use serrated edge blades in an urban environment. In the wilderness, they're not so effective. Uh, most of you bushcraft craft guys would agree that a straight edge blade is better uh, for when it comes to bushcraft and primitive skills. Uh, so I keep a serrated edge on me in an urban environment, specifically for combat situations. If I'm ever in, in, in a self-defense scenario and I need to get something out like this, uh, this stays in me, uh, it, it, in my kit. Um, it doesn't stay on my person. I do have a uh, you know a pocket blade that I carry, which is also serrated. Um, but this is just kind of a backup. You know, if, if shit was to break loose and I had and I was out and about and I needed to get into this and get my kit ready, and uh, you know, essentially, shit hit the fan or whatever, this would be the blade that I would probably carry in an urban environment. I keep a small medical kit. Nothing fancy here, guys. This is not a like a trauma kit. Uh, gunshot wound quick kit or anything like that. It's just a basic basic first aid cuts burns and bruises um, Also got a bag of hand warmers um, And the primary reason I keep these hand warmers is for uh, obviously colder weather, but um, I keep I tend to go lighter weight on my sleep system and the result of doing that means I, I got to deal with a little bit of cold sometimes to get by but I go lighter weight to make my pack more sustainable and um more comfortable too at the same time so you're not lugging around a big big sleep system so i go light and i also use these and, I, and a lot of people will tell you to heat up a bottle and throw it down into your sleeping bag and that will radiate and keep you warm throughout the night that's a good method to do it but i also do use these hand warmers with the same effect i'll crack two of these open i'll put one down at the base of my sleeping bag to keep my feet warm and one kind of in the middle to keep my body warm and uh, it works really well because it just radiates in the bag so these are really great for that and of course they're their intended purpose as a hand warmer they're really good for that too um, always keep a spare roll of duct tape duct tape fixes everything you can't go wrong with it i have a little i believe this is a five by five tarp nothing special just like a dollar uh, at the dollar tree it's not going to withstand a torrential downpour or anything like that probably but it will keep the majority of rain off of whatever i put it on not a huge tarp uh, just something simple to maybe cover up a pack while i'm out or, or lay down a, a base for a shelter if i needed to uh, just a backup tarp uh, this here i don't really know why i keep this just a, one of them cool guy things that everybody likes to have 
picked this up online for five bucks or something like that. I forget where I got it from, but I'll find out for you guys if anybody's interested. Um, they, they circulate on Facebook a lot. You know, they're, they're a pretty cool thing to have. I always keep a uh, two uh, Cobra walkie-talkies here. These are, uh, I believe, 25-mile radius walkie-talkies. Um, and these are good for, you know, like a convoy situation if you needed to keep in communication with, with anybody in your convoy. Um, and also, you know, just general communications if your phones are out or anything like that and you're doing some, some type of, you know, field training exercise. Uh, these are good for that. They're actually really loud, so I taped over the uh, speaker portion of them. Um, and even with that tape, they're still pretty loud, so I wanted to kind of minim minimize the, uh, you know, the sound that they put off if, if uh, being silent was of the essence. So, uh, two 25-mile radius walkie-talkies, some spare batteries, a PT belt, because you can never go wrong with a PT belt if I'm ever running and I want to put this on uh, at night or whatever. Uh, it's also a good reflector. As you guys can see how bright it is right now, it's actually uh, getting really dark right now. I uh, hope you guys can still see fine. But um, I keep this if I need to, you know, throw it on a pack or whatnot to, uh, you know, mark my camp or uh, do anything like that. Um, it's all, you, you can never really go wrong with it. It's a good thing to have. I've got the uh, syringe for my Sawyer water filtration system, um, and the reason why I keep this in here versus my pack is because I don't always purge my uh, my filtration system after every single use in the field. Uh, I usually just wait till I get back home. Um, that because it's just, in my opinion, it takes up unnecessary space in my pack, and I want to actually maximize the effectiveness and functionality of my pack. So that means cutting down on excess gear that I don't specifically need. Uh, so this stays in my my trunk kit and uh, I purge it whenever I come back in from the field. This here is a, a little trifold chair, a little camp chair. Again, nothing special. I think I picked this up at the flea market for like three dollars. Um, and it'll hold a pretty good amount of weight. I'm about, I'm about 230 pounds. It is made in China. It's essentially junk, but it will uh, hold up and it has held up for me. Uh, for a, a good while now, so um, this is a good little chair to have. It's nice and compact. You can throw it in a pack, and uh, it's really lightweight, um, so you can't go wrong with that. I've of course got our Badlands Camp Axe. This thing is phenomenal. If you haven't checked it out on our website yet, uh, go do so. It's a hand forged axe. We get these made in Poland with our branding on them, and uh, if you're looking for a good bushcraft axe, these definitely do the job. I'm gonna kind of speed up because I know it's getting dark. Um, if if you miss anything, drop me a comment in the box below or whatnot, and I'll get to that. But um, I'm gonna go ahead and speed up through this. I keep my uh, my boots here, and uh, these are Rocky SV2s, I believe. Uh, really rugged boot. I've had them since basic training back in like 2011. Uh, these are phenomenal boots, and I still use them today. Um, they're, they're about worn down at this point, so I need to get a new pair. But for ankle support and a good thick strong boot you can't go wrong with rocky keep a, a bundle of excess paracord i need to organize this but uh, always keep a little extra paracord i've got two compression straps these are just extra compression straps from packs that i've had and i use it that to lash things to a pack like extra things that i have uh, or if i need to secure anything in my vehicle i'll use these compression straps to kind of secure that I have an ATAX FG camouflage uniform, and I use this a lot when I go out in the field and train, uh, so that's pretty consistently used. I've got a Maxpedition mini pocket organizer here, this is for EDC, uh, not currently in use uh, because I've, uh, I've changed the way I carry my EDC, so this is just a backup. This here is a, a rain poncho, just like a dollar at Walmart or any outdoors place you can pick these up fairly cheap it's always good to have a spare poncho and this has many different survival uses as well other than just keeping you dry got my drop leg holster and i use this whenever i go out in the range and uh, do some training uh, it's not something i always need on me but i keep it in my vehicle kit in case i need to whip it out Keep a spare beanie. You can never go wrong with a beanie. 
I've got a 10 by 10 wool blanket. This thing is great for in the field. Um, if you ever, uh, and like I said, this is modular, so it goes in and out. So like in the winter time when it gets more cold, I will throw this in with my sleep system as well as my sleeping bag and everything like that. Uh, because again, I, I go with a lighter weight sleeping bag most of the time, so I'll supplement it with a uh, wool blanket like this. And uh, this thing will keep you really warm. And you can pick these up for like 10 bucks at Harbor Freight. Uh, really cheap thing to have, really good thing to have. Also got a bag of dog food for my battle buddy. As you know, he always goes with me just about everywhere. And the last three items that I keep are my sleep system. This is the Snug Pack Jungle Bag. And uh, this thing is phenomenal. I'll be doing a full on review on it as we go. The Snug Pack All Weather Tarp. And an Alps Mountaineering Sleeping Pad. And uh, that pretty much does it for this entire trunk kit here. Um, aside from the trunk kit, in the back here I also keep a uh, three liter Camelback full of water at all times. And I've got a little charcoal camping stove for if I'm ever camping and want to do some basic cooking. So that pretty much does it guys. Sorry it got a little dark on us there. Took a little longer than I expected. Um, but. Uh, that's all I'm going to go over for, uh, go over it tonight in this video. Uh, I haven't really done much else uh, for this, uh, for my bug out vehicle, um, so I'm not going to bother showing you the, the interior. You guys have already seen my uh, my King's Arsenal visor covers. Um, if you haven't seen those, click this link up top and uh, we're over here, wherever it's at, and go check that out. Um, Till next time, guys, remember to comment, like, subscribe. If anybody's got any questions about this kit that I use or any of the gear or whatnot, uh, drop it in the box below, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. See you later. Concept essentially means to move through your environment invisibly. Now, the gray area that I'm talking about is the area between pre-collapse and post-collapse survival. Everybody's always talking about, you know, don't wear tags.